Between you and I, the common destination that we all share is death. As Steve Jobs has once said, everyone wants to get to heaven, but no one wants to die to get there. If it's not death, then likelihood, the common destination that we all share is actually retirement. Unlike death, which is just one path, retirement, there are many paths, many perspectives. If you ask someone who is retired right now, they probably say 1 million is more than sufficient. I myself, I presented to you $1.6 million needed for retirement, but I've also mentioned in that video, it could also be for two. Right now trending, a lot of my friends on YouTube are mentioning $1.9 million is needed for retirement, and in previous surveys, some have voted for $5 million needed for retirement. $5 million. How many of us listening in today will really get to that number? That's why today, I'd like to present you a different perspective and tell you why you may not need that much for retirement after all. Hi guys, welcome back. Before getting further, let me invite you to smash the like button early because you know I have the goods. Let's break down this discussion about retirement and how we all come up with our numbers. On the left, you realize that if you ask anyone about retirement, they would say, ideally, I have a big enough investment pot such that I only draw the dividend. I only draw the income from that retirement pot and it will never deplete. And if this is true, my income stream is perpetual. Very beautiful, correct? I'll never have that anxiousness that I'll run out of money because I'm only using the returns, the interest from the investment pot. If I can't achieve that on the left, then B would be, I need to have a big enough investment pot. $1.6 million, $1.9 million, $2 million, $5 million. Such that if I draw it down, it's going to be very unlikely that I'll deplete it before my last days. That's also how this 4% withdrawal rule is also developed. On the other hand, on the top right, you see that why not draw down this capital? Then you don't need so much after all, correct? There's this book before, Die With Zero, which means as and when you have enough to last for your retirement, you should go for retirement already and slowly draw this money already and ideally you die with zero dollars. That's where you get life's maximum utility in experiences and happiness. And on the bottom right, you realize another concept whereby I need only a modest amount for retirement. Something reasonable that I'll just work with. Comparing between the four, those on the left and those on the right, which would you prefer? Quite obviously those on the left, correct? Because those on the left tells you that, hey, if you get to retirement, whereby you no longer have income, don't worry, don't feel anxious because you have more than enough. That's why work, 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 save, 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 get to these big, big figures and you will be fine. Yes, it is true that some people will definitely get there. Some people are doing very well in careers. Some people are very good at investing. They have more than enough to leave behind a legacy. And on the right, you realize, very scary, correct? The first idea is that you, you prepare to draw down your monies. The money is finite, it's not perpetual. And the other concept is you need only a modest amount. And if this modest amount is less than what people say, then figure a way to solve it. Very scary, right? Those on the right hand side, nobody wants to admit that this is actually still viable. Take a second to pause over here and listen to what I have to say. If everybody can get to the left hand side, that's fantastic. But how many 2 millionaires, 5 millionaires do we have in Singapore? If right now you don't even have 200,000 or 500,000 invested in your portfolio, what are the chances you have to settle for something on the right? We have to be realistic. And today, my sharing is to show you that actually the right hand side should not be too scary. I'll come back to that in a while, so stick right to the very end. But let's talk firstly on the top left hand side something that makes you feel calm, something that makes you feel less anxious when you step into retirement. If only you draw your dividend income, your interest income, your rental income, and this amount comes to you perpetually, no more financial worries already, correct? What that means is if you have $2 million and your investment yield is 4%, you have 80,000 to consume. Sounds very nice on theory, but it's actually the lazy way to approach retirement planning. Some key changes can come along the way. What if, for example, the bond that you invested into gets into a default? There are some retirees who lost their monies in high fluxes bond. What if the dividend stock that you bought started to see deteriorations in terms of their business? Would that also mean that your dividends investing in them will start to decline over time? Nothing is static, correct? You can see previous blue chips in Singapore, such as ComfortDelGro, such as Starhub. 
And if you ask investors 10 years back, they will probably tell you that these are very safe. What about property rental income from a $2 million condo? Are we so sure that conservancy charges will not step up over time? Are we so sure that we don't need to reinvest into the property to spruce it up so that there's future rental income? What I'm suggesting is yes, in theory, this method works, but sometimes life throws us curveballs. And the most important part is this approach of thinking about retirement may not necessarily factor in inflation, which leads to the second method. Retire with a big enough amount that fits the 4% rule. And how does this work is 25 times of annual expenses. So for example, your current expenses are now $40,000 a year. $3,000 plus per month? Very reasonable. But we do know of inflation, correct? And in 20-25 years time, maybe this $40,000 would inflate to around $80,000. So we use 25 times of $80,000 and that's why we need $2 million for retirement. This is the 4% rule developed by William Bangan, also a financial planner. And what it is tested against is that in 30 years, with a mixture of bonds and equities, a retiree like you can draw out 4% of the investment capital and inflate it over time your consumption. This portfolio through markets ups and downs will still be enough to sustain for at least 30 years. So again, the key difference is in the second scenario of the 4% rule, you are inflating your yearly consumption and it still can last. It's not a lazy way of thinking, I just draw out dividends and hopefully I build a big enough pot that can provide me enough dividend income for perpetuity. In any case, in these two scenarios, the amounts needed are going to be very big. That's why I would like to lead you to the right hand side of the equation, just in case you are in the sandwich generation, just in case you haven't started planning for yourself financially early enough and you are facing a shorter runway. I want to ensure you that you should not be too anxious about retirement and that there are a lot of ways to get to the right retirement figure. As why I say at the start, death is just one path, but what you really need in retirement, there are many, many ways to see it. This is something I'll touch on a bit more also in the coming Josh Sun Finance Summit. I have two dates for this year. On the 29th of October, that is a Sunday, and on the 4th of November, that's a Saturday, because for last year, we actually sold out for 50 packs. I'd like to meet you individually and answer your questions and also show you what to look out for for your own financial planning and your own retirement planning come 2023 and 2024. So look for links below, find the date that suits you the best, get your tickets early because sales started coming in the moment I released news of it. Tickets are going at only $69 and if you like, bring a friend, bring a partner along and I'll see you there too. So back to the point of what you need to focus on in terms of retirement, especially if you are not projected to build a big enough pot. The first point on the top right is if you are planning to consume down this amount, that is a contrast to someone who's only imagining retirement by drawing perpetual amounts. In this scenario, die with zero, it means you consume your entire retirement pot. But I do understand that is way too scary. So I'm not crazy enough to suggest that for everybody. And in Singapore, we have CPF life, which means also there's always going to be a perpetual layer once you have a CPF account. You are never going to run out of money. Government does not quite allow you to do so. But what we can solve is this situation. If you want to retire with less, then we just need to fix the core expenses with a perpetual amount. Which means also, if you have full retirement sum, FRS, this is $198,800 which will provide you $1,005 to $2,000 per month as retirement income. The challenge for that is it comes only at age of 65 onwards. So one way to solve it is for you to buy retirement plans or annuity plans to lay on top of CPF life as an additional stream of income. Once you have some parts of these, then don't be too worried to have your other investment pots ready for drawdown. Very often when I handle private clients' portfolios, I realize if it's a stock portfolio, especially those with many, many counters, many, many names inside, it gets a bit difficult to consider what to sell off. Should I sell off this share, which is profitable? Maybe you can't even do well. Or should I sell off this, which has losses? But I don't want that paper loss to become a real loss. There is confusion usually in selling down a stock's portfolio. And these are things I like to warn you ahead of time. Then you need to conceptualize that when you start retirement in the first 10 years, you're likely going to still have good health, correct? Use these 10 years to enjoy retirement a bit more. 
draw down these amounts more aggressively in the first 5 or 10 years. And don't worry too much because at the back, you still have your CPF life to help you with your basic needs. Which leads to the next factor, targeting only a modest retirement income pot to draw down. When you're in this situation, don't be too anxious or so. Because I guess many of you listening in, you are resourceful. You've done well in your careers, you know how to handle a family. You know that you have certain times where you're a bit more affluent, you can be more luxurious. But you also have times last time where you slept in motels and took budget airlines. The key word about having just a modest retirement portfolio that you are willing to draw down is adaptability. I repeat again, adaptability. If you have adaptability, you know you can scale back down on your expenses and not be too unhappy about it. Yes, when you're having higher income, you can drink wine. But now, just go to a coffee shop. Maybe it's not so bad after all. Maybe previously you do have time and don't like recycling things. Nowadays, with more time in retirement and you want to cut back down on expenses, you are looking to maximize things and you are more willing to do recycling work. There is an element of adaptability in you. You know guys, when we go to army, when we go outfield, we imagine no bath, no canteen food, no toilet, we'll be in trouble. But little do we know, when we are used to it, we go on a mission, 5 days, it's done. So there is always an adaptability element deep inside you. Then the question is, if there is, is just a 500,000 pot enough for your retirement not? Manage that 500,000 pot, draw it down slowly. And also, before I give you a further tip on what to do with it, smash the like button if you haven't done so. And the tip is, when you are on this approach and markets are bad, understand this risk called sequence of redrawal risk. This chart explains what this risk exactly is. One actually saw a much longer runway for his portfolio. The key reason, bad performance in the first few years of investing. Which means also when markets are crashing and you need expenses, selling your portfolio at that point of time is very detrimental. You need to find ways to find other sources and not touch your portfolio in bear markets. When in bull markets, no problem. That's called taking profit, correct? You take profit, the portfolio goes up again. That's nice, but in bear markets, you need to understand, you need to pull back, be adaptable in stringing your expenses and survive that one, two years. Bear markets don't last forever. If you are resourceful and adaptable and know how to avoid drawdowns, your portfolio can actually last way longer than you think. That's why in conclusion, I'd like to show you a new number and get your feedback in the comment sections. What if you only have $500,000 in your portfolio in addition, of course, to CPF life? Is that enough for retirement? Let me know in the comment sections below and thank you for watching right at the very end. With that, I'd like to invite you to this previous tutorial I have on $1.6 million. How did I come about with that? If you haven't seen it, check that out because I think it has important nuggets of wisdom too. And also, look for links below for Josh Tan Finance Summit. With that, sign off and see you there. Take care as always. Goodbye.